everyone. It's kind of funny. Uh, sometimes there's something you like for a really long time, and you bring it up from time to time and, and uh, stuff you do, and then it blows up in the sense that someone with a big audience brings it up, it shows up, it's mentioned in, in something that has a lot of followers, and then everyone is aware of it. Um, so that's something I'm talking about is the book Blindsight by Peter Watts. Uh, I love this book. And <clears throat> what happened recently is a guest at the, um, of the Joe Rogan Experience brought it up. Uh, and, and I was kind of like, I kind of feel like a hipster. Like, oh, I knew of this book before it was mentioned on this really popular podcast. So I just want to mention real quick why I love it so much. Um, so the reason why I bought it was just <laughs> because I heard that he had a really interesting take on vampires. Because there, this is a hard sci-fi novel, but it has vampires in it. But the way they're explained is so cool. It, it's so cool, you know. And um, they're just this this other hominid race, you know. The same way, like there's uh, humans, chimpanzees, like they're just like another branch, uh, except they're like way smarter than humans. But they're also, uh, for lack of a better word, sociopathic. But and I know, you know, don't don't get me wrong. I know in real life we have sociopaths who are not harmful, but vampires feed on humans, and the way they explain everything is just they go into a hibernation, and then you know they wake up later. So from the perspective of humans, they think they don't age, but they just kind of like vampires hibernate, and while they're doing that, they're not uh, aging as at least not as quickly, and then. Um, the reason why um, they can look at a crucifix is not because of religious power. It's because their brains, they go into epilepsy, ep epileptic attacks when they see like straight angles. So <laughs> so it, it's just like they have this flaw anyway. So, uh, but vampires are just one aspect of blindsight. <clears throat> and uh, I bring it up because in the Joe Rogan podcast, they, they mentioned vampires. And I think if I remember correctly, the guest was a filmmaker. And he was talking about maybe bringing that type of vampire to a story that's set in modern times. Which uh, <laughs> I thought, well, maybe that can work. But if it does, it's, it would just be taking the vampire concept from Peter Watts and making a movie out of it. But it wouldn't be set in the universe of Blindsight. Because in Blindsight, in our modern times, and vampires have disappeared. They're, they're brought back in the future through uh, genetics through like genetic research and they, they they find like old genetic uh data from vampires and bring them back to life so um that tells me that i don't know i don't know if um it's kind of interesting because this has so much to offer but the person seemed to the filmmaker to me maybe just really liked the Taken Vampires and left everything else aside from the novel. But the novel deals with aliens. It's a first contact uh, story where a crew of modified humans has to go into space to deal with uh, aliens who might be invading Earth. They're not sure. And uh, the, the leader of this crew is a vampire. But it's, it, it, it deals with a lot more. It deals with uh, how our brain works, with sentience. And it kind of posits that sentience, it, you know, we, we kind of like um, think that sentience and intelligence are the same thing, but the book kind of implies it's not. Like it, it implies that sentience, being self-aware, takes up a lot of space in our brains. And that book made me think, and when I was reading this book, I, it was many years ago, I was a security guard in a museum and I worked in the night shift. So I was by myself walking a whole museum at night. And then when I was doing one... one um, one round of the whole museum, I would go back to where I would wait for the next round and I would read the book at night and then walk by myself thinking about this book. It's a very smart book. And you, I was just left thinking and, and like really eager to finish the round so I could go back to reading it. And uh, and it's kind of weird to read this book in isolation at night, you know, <laughs> walking through the museum. But what was really interesting is this book makes you think about how our brains work. And it's almost like the brain has different sections. So I don't, I may remember some things and not very precisely, but this is kind of what I remember because I haven't read it in years, but it's still very fresh in my mind, nevertheless. But I might get some stuff a bit wrong or, and some things are a bit like theory 
they're not necessarily like uh, everything is proven by science. Like it's more like Peter Watts' opinion on on how our brains work and all that from his research. But you know, um, and uh, basically the idea is that self awareness occupies a big chunk of the brain, and um, it makes us less efficient at many things. Because you know, like ants, for example, will build like gigantic network networks. You know, and are are they even self aware? I don't I don't know. Um, so, and it's kind of funny, you know, in life, we all have that moment where let's say someone betrays us and we look back and you know what? I suspected that. And then we suddenly remember stuff that we noticed, but we didn't really notice back then. We just noticed and we call it in retrospect, right? But there's a part of our brain who's shouting at the self-aware part, like, notice this. Don't you see this? You know, like, don't you see how the person blinked at that moment? That means something like that means they lied or, you know, like there's things we notice subconsciously. And parts of our brain notice these things and are shouting at our self-aware part, which is, according to Peter Watts, the dumbest part of the brain. The part that is self-aware is just this idiot that's receiving information from way smarter parts of the brain. And uh, that made a lot of sense to me, actually. Like, because it, it, we've seen examples of um, people who... Um, um, what's the term? Um, you know when someone walks at night but they're not really awake? um sleepwalking well and um we see, there's examples of people who have night terrors and like can i sleepwalk but they're like shouting and flailing and uh, one of them like takes down his his blinds and then still in his sleep still sleepwalking the guy sets his blinds back up and goes back to bed and the guy doesn't even know like he he sees a video of himself and he's like wow and then he tries awake he tries to he, he takes down the blinds and he tries to set them back up and he's nowhere near as fast as he was when he was sleepwalking, which is fascinating. Like when he's awake and present, basically the idea is like there's parts of their brain that are like just being self-aware, just wondering, oh, how much time is this going to take? Um, just these things, you know, and we all experience that. Like, have you ever gone somewhere very often? You just walk to a place and then someone asks you, how do you get there? And once you start thinking about it, you suddenly forget how to get there. That's That happened to me. I don't know if it happened to anyone else. One thing that did happen to me is back when I was a security guard, I had to go through many doors. And this is a story I, I mentioned in my Bruno's MMA show. I also have a, another channel, Bruno's MMA show, in my um, interview with Tony Blauer. And uh, I actually brought this up, like this this fact that um, there's things we notice that if we let, like if our self-aware part, like kind of lets, shuts up for a moment, stops and lets the, other, the rest of the brain kind of like send us information, Again, I don't know if I'm explaining this <laughs> clearly, but it's very useful. You, it, it, I guess other people would call like, uh, listen to your gut, you know, your gut feeling, trust your instincts, you know, it's all the same thing. Um, so, yeah, so, <clears throat> uh, you know, like sometimes you, you step into a dangerous situation and after a fact, you're like, I knew I shouldn't have gone there. Why did I do that? You know, because you weren't paying attention to that part of your brain that was telling you. So uh, what I would do as a security guard, like I had all these doors to go through, they were all locked and I had a huge set of keys, countless keys. And um, so I had to try many keys, which one goes there? And then does it turn left or right? Some of them would only open if you turn left, some only right, some of them didn't matter. And then other <laughs> locks, the key was upside down even. And it would take me forever at each door. And then I was reading this book and I thought, okay, if the self-aware part that's overthinking and always present and like, you know, like uh, having all these thoughts at once and, and if, if being self-aware can occupy part of the brain, what if I don't think about it? it, it this is a, this is the, um, the best way I can explain it. I can't really explain it better than that. And, you know, it was night. I was always tired because, you know, during the weekend you try to be up. So you always start the week tired. So it's like you're, you're always kind of tired when you work at night unless you just accept to live at night, period, which most people don't. And, and near the light but anyway your brain is already kind of in this tired haze so it's kind of easy to go into this mode where you you just stop thinking about it you kind of let your subconscious and your instincts take over and what would happen is i would all when i would do that i would always choose the right key and i would always turn it the right way i had no problem i would go through doors and then as soon as i started thinking about it i didn't know which key to grab and i don't know which way to turn the key so this book literally changed my life um I, and you know it, it got me paying attention a lot more to things like body language and 
micro expressions when you can catch them, which is really difficult. And I'm not trained in any way, but I just mean it kind of, um, you know, made me think of certain things a bit more. I was already paying attention to body language and all those things, but it kind of made me even more eager to notice these things. So, yeah, so so the whole, you know, and, and the, the whole idea is that the aliens they're facing in this first contact story um, are not self-aware. They're intelligent, but they're not self-aware. And it's, it's just a really interesting story. It's just fascinating. And I don't really want to go into too much detail without spoiling things that are mind-blowing. Um, it's not an easy read. The you know the the your trust into this world, the sci-fi world, and a lot of jargon, a lot of uh, technical stuff is thrown at you. But when you stick with it, a lot of it ends up being like a bit more clear. You know, just through reading about certain things, you can understand how they apply, if you will. Um, so at first it might be a bit discouraging because they, they throw a lot of technical jargon at you from this world, you know, the, the setting, like um, the, techno the names of technologies used and stuff like that. And it doesn't really stop to explain. You have to, sometimes it does, but sometimes you just have to keep up and keep reading and that's fine. And you, you get to understand that. Um, and the ending leaves you really like thinking about it for a long time. <laughs> like this is a book that once you finished it, you think about it for a long time. And um, it's a book that changed my perception of how the mind works. You know, and at the end of the day, the, the vampires and blind, blindside are fascinating, but they're they're not even like the most fascinating thing about the book. <laughs> so, you know, um, which is something that I really wanted to to um, to mention. I believe Peter Watts has put Blindset for free online, uh, and uh, unless they're taken down at some point for copyright reasons, I don't know. You can even find, if you search Blindsight on YouTube, you can even find, like, uh, someone who's reading the book. It's not, profe it's not professional audiobooks. There's someone read the book and put it up on YouTube. Um, so he makes mistakes here and there sometimes. Uh, he, he might stutter a word a bit, or sometimes he actually goes, like, oh, let me restart. When he mumbles a word, <laughs> starts a sentence, it happened at least once. But if for those who don't have time to read or whatever, you can even go on YouTube, and unless it gets taken down eventually, uh, you can find someone who's just reading Blindsight. And it's a really, really good book. Um, so yeah, just search it. And it's by Peter Watts. So uh, yeah, uh, I really recommend it. Really recommend this book. It is a bit depressing, to be honest. Um, not necessarily referencing to the ending. It might or not, might not be depressing. You know, I don't want to give spoilers. But just reading through it can be depressing. Uh, if you really get into the mood, if you really absorb what's saying, it, it, it's not a cheerful book, but it's really worth a read. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching.